If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Revelation chapter 13. We are going to get a few more in before the holidays. And, uh, you know, Christmas season, we will have some Christmas sermons there. Uh, but we will pick up again. Uh, we'll get as many in as we can. And we thank God. I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am enjoying studying. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, we're talking about the false prophet today. The false prophet. And let me give you the outline if you want to fill in the blanks there. Number one, his person. Who is he? Who is he? Number two is power. And he did have a lot of power. He was not almighty. Only God is almighty. But he did have power. And number three, his purpose. His purpose. And let me tell you this right off the bat. It wasn't good. Okay? When you look at the unholy trinity is how some writers uh, describe that. You have Satan, you have the Antichrist, and you have the false prophet. You know, in the book of Revelation, we see the major weapon in Satan's arsenal is deception. Jesus himself called Satan a liar and the father of all lies. False prophets have been on earth ever since the fall in the garden. We get closer to the return of Christ, as we get closer to the return of Christ, many false prophets will teach lies in order to deceive the people. The Antichrist will be a political and military leader who will claim to be God. The false prophet will be a religious leader who will lead people to worship the Antichrist, who will also convince the lost world that the Antichrist will solve all the world's problem and make things better. They both will use the media to communicate their lies to the world. The Antichrist's goal is to destroy all other religions and become a powerful world leader who controls everyone and everything. And you have to also understand uh, when it comes to deception, and I call it the counterfeit trinity, Satan will counterfeit God and, and pretend to be God. Antichrist will counterfeit Jesus, and the false prophet will counterfeit the Holy Spirit. And don't forget, last week, we talked about a one-world government, a one-world uh, uh, one religion, and a one-world economy. And all these things are falling in place. And before I forget it, you better keep watching the news, folks. Because one of the things that the Antichrist is going to be, I'm seeing, he is, he is going to, uh, you know, go and, and, you know, lead people and let everybody know uh, there will be a ceasefire in the Middle East. Just remember that. Okay, and I'm not saying right away you'll be able to identify him, but that is going to be one of the clues uh, that we are getting closer to the rapture of the church uh, than anything I know. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast. When we see another, that means it was like the first beast, which was the Antichrist coming up out of the earth. We know he came up out of the sea, the Antichrist. But this particular beast will come up out of the earth. And some people believe uh, that to be the abyss, okay? And, and all we know is he is demonically inspired. He has the power that Satan and the Antichrist has given them. If you are looking at the notes, or even if you're not looking at the notes, look in your bulletin and look at the comparison of the two beasts here in Revelation chapter 13. The Antichrist rises from the sea. The false prophet rises from the earth. The Antichrist has seven heads with blasphemous names. The false prophet has one head. The Antichrist had ten horns with crowns. Uh, the false prophet has two horns like a lamb. And watch that word, because 29 times in Revelation, the word lamb is used. This is the only place where the definition is not Jesus Christ. So what I'm saying is, these false prophets will sneak things in, they will deceive you, and if you're not careful, you will be thinking like them, right is wrong and wrong is right. 
Folks, there's only one Word of God, there's only one Holy Spirit, there's only one God, and there's only one Jesus. And that's who we serve. Do not listen to these other voices. They are here to destroy our world and to destroy your relationship with Jesus Christ. Authority was given to him by the dragon of the Antichrist. The false prophet exercises authority of the first beast. The Antichrist, the whole earth, worships the dragon because of the beast. The false prophet uh, causes uh, people to worship the first beast. The Antichrist speaks blasphemy against God for three and a half years. And the false prophet performs amazing signs to deceive the whole world into worshiping the first beast. The Antichrist makes war with the saints and for a time overcomes them. The false prophet forces the world to receive the mark of the beast or suffer severe persecution. And I jotted down seven characteristics of the false prophet. He will be a deceiver. He will speak the words of Satan. He will promote false worship of the Antichrist. He will use miracles to deceive the world. He will persecute those who follow the true lamb. He will mark those who worship the Antichrist. And he will lead the world to worship a mere man. And to understand Scripture, that's why I'm giving you this foundation. If you will remember some of these things, we will be able to see this in Scripture. So back to verse 1. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And again, when we talk about another beast, we are talking about the false prophet. And Jesus Christ himself spoke of the false prophet in Matthew chapter uh, 7. Matthew 7, verse 15. This is Jesus' word. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, okay? They are deceptive. They are hiding the truth. They look gentle. They look like, you know, they're looking out for you. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Well, folks, when we think of the Antichrist and we think of Satan and we think of the false prophet, they want to destroy Christians. They want to destroy uh, you know, the reputation of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus tells us we need to beware of those things, we need to beware. And folks, you have to use the Holy Spirit. If Christ is in you, you have the Holy Spirit. And you can have discernment. And some people, new Christians, they don't have a lot of discernment. But folks, I know when something is wrong. I can turn on the TV and watch someone for less than five minutes and tell you whether you need to be listening to them or not. So don't be deceived. Anybody can buy airtime. Anybody can put a suit on and a Bible in their hand. That does not mean they are true prophets of God. So it says, he came out of the earth and he had two horns. Why two horns? because he's not going to use power like the Antichrist. The Antichrist had ten horns. So the, the uh, a false prophet will be more gentle, like a lamb. He will imitate Jesus Christ and spoke like a dragon. And folks, you have to understand, when you look at this, it's going to be totally different from the Antichrist. It's going to be him being a good speaker, he is going to be gentle. He is going to come in as your brother. He is going to convince people that he is looking out for you. He is going to convince people that, you know, to follow the Antichrist is what you need to do. And in verse 12, and he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So he has an agenda. He has a program. And he will, uh, you know, speak. And, and the Antichrist will be there. And 
here he is talking about worship. And folks, the Bible tells us we need to worship only God. The first commandment speaks of worshiping only God. And then it reminds us there of the Antichrist and his fake death. And people will be believing the, the beast. Hold your finger there and go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 9. And they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Oh, folks, the closer we get to the rapture of the church, there will be more and more deception. And we need to mark those speakers and mark them. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will, whack, will grow cold. Folks, is, do you not already see this? I mean, you know, what possesses somebody to take a gun and just kill 18 people? I'm telling you what it is. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's hate. It's meanness. It's, I don't care about your life. I don't care about your God. And that is in our world today. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And we have already seen the protection of the 144,000 and God protecting the Christians. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. And here's what Jesus is saying. These are the words of Jesus. I know it's going to get bad. I know it's going to look bad. And I know it'll seem as there is no hope. But there's two things you need to do. Okay, number one, you need to share the gospel with people around you. There are people all around you that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They're going to die and go to hell unless we tell them. We need to be busy sharing the gospel according to Jesus' words. And then the second thing I will share with you in just a few minutes. So we see the spirit of the false prophets and the false teachers. Now look in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive hearsays, hearsays even denying the Lord who brought them, and bring them themselves swift destruction. And folks, that's what they want. They want to rule I mean, the Antichrist and Satan, they want to rule the world. And they're going to be destructive in that. Verse 2, and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. And we've also said last week that the Antichrist will blaspheme the name of God and blaspheme the word of God. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Folks, I am telling you, it's going to get worse before it gets better. By the way, I meant to say this earlier. If the bulletin is bothering you before I get to it, that's the last point, turn it upside down first. Just turn it upside down, all right? I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Because <laughs> I, was, I was told two or three times, we're not taking the mark of the beast. All right, that is the mark of the beast, and we will talk about it, but I am not promoting that in any form or fashion. So we see here the false prophet and false teachers, they're already in the world. They are planting people. They have a plan. They have a scheme, and Satan will be behind that. The Antichrist, we've already studied, and now the false prophet will be that third person in the un holy trinity so we see his person he is up to no good all right now let's see his power his power look back in revelation verse 13 
he performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And we've seen signs. Uh, you can go back to the time uh, of Moses and you know him telling Pharaoh to let my people go. He throws the rod down, okay? And, and it turns in, into a, a snake and he picks it back up. Then what does uh, Pharaoh's people do? They do the same thing. So even Satan has power to imitate, imitate the true God. But I am telling you, God is in control of everything. And even in that instance, okay, God uh, uh, used Pharaoh uh, to discipline, and, and their captivity was to discipline the children of God. Another thing, when you call down fire from heaven, you think of Elijah in 1 Kings. And Elijah against uh, 850 uh, prophets of Baal, and they were all singing and dancing around the fire and acting crazy, all right? And nothing happened all day. And Elijah fixed it up, made everything in the altar what it should be. And he prayed and called down fire. And folks, you have to realize, he poured water all over that wood. And whoosh, the power of God was, was seen. And everyone there knew that our God is real. Even the two, Moses and Elijah, in my opinion, the two witnesses, all right, they called fire down. So that is nothing new. But my point is, they do the same thing that a prophet would do to make you think. And folks, they're not going to do it without God's permission. Okay? So God allows these things to happen. All right? It's his overall divine will. Okay? It's, it's like other things that go on in this world. I mean, you think of so many things that are awry and so many diseases and so many things. And folks, I tell you what you can do. You can trace it back to the fall in the garden. When sin came into this world, destruction came into this world. And so you have to deal with these things. And he called fire down in verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who on earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. I want you to see the first three words in verse 14. And he deceives. Folks, you're talking about the Garden of Eden again. Turn to, turn to Genesis 3. I just want to remind you of this. This is not a new thing. Genesis 3, verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. You can put the word deceptive right in there. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed uh, said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? What's he doing? He's baiting Eve. He's saying, Are you sure that's what God said? Folks, that's why you need to know the Word of God. You need to know it. So you won't be deceived. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. She knew what God said. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. It's kind of like people, I saw this happen the other day. I was in a building. And on the door, it said, wet paint. And this knucklehead guy <laughs> walks up and touches it, and the paint got, it says wet paint. Satan does the same thing. This will not hurt you. But if it's something that God says you better not do, it will hurt you. Folks, sin is the problem. Our curiosity is the problem. Our desires, our lust, our wants is the problem. Satan bold-faced lied to Eve. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He not only baited her, he lied the second time also. Man, if you'll do this, you will be like God. 
Well, folks, I'm just telling you, you as a Christian ought to know that's not right. You need to stay as far away from people that would make that statement. So when the woman saw that the tree was for good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together. <laughs> we don't have time to go to the rest of it, but I think it's just, I, I know God has a sense of humor, all right? One is Adam Eve and Eve was hiding from God. Folks, you're not going to hide from God. I don't care if your room is pitch black. He knows you're in there. And we need to understand that darkness represents sin. And we need to get as far away from sin as we possibly can. And that's what, that's what the, the, the false prophet, he is deceiving people around him, telling people on earth to make an image. What does that make you think of? Nebuchadnezzar. What did he do? He built one 90 feet tall and 10 feet wide. What did he demand that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worship him? Folks, don't bow down to any idol. Now you say, no, I, I, I stay away from the statues. But what about the God of money? What about the God of power? What about the God of deception? What about the God? And you can just fill in the bank. Folks, Satan has bought and, you know, he's paid for these lies and we're believing it hook, line, and sinker. He's baiting us with his lies. And the false prophet is telling them, build this uh, idol, build this. And that's what he's saying there. Uh, the image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. And what is he saying? He's saying, you know it's true. If the Antichrist did this, then he has supernatural powers. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So he promotes the Antichrist and the Antichrist agenda. Then he says, we are going to build this image of the Antichrist. And I believe it probably started right around the desecration of the temple, and I think they would either built it in the temple itself or outside the temple to be seen, to be seen by all. This image of gold, uh, just like Nebuchadnezzar, and, and he said it was okay and we needed, and the people, excuse me, the people of that day needed to bow down and worship him. Folks, we only worship Jehovah God of this Bible. And it says, Notice, if you don't, the image of the beast, you would be killed. And if you'll go later on, and we'll read this later on in Re uh, Revelation, we're, we're talking about beheaded, okay? And already in our day and time, unfortunately, those things are going on in third world countries. Folks, it will cost you your life to be a Christian your life. And we don't have to so much worry about that in our own world, but I'm just telling you, it's everywhere. Death is around us. Persecution of Christians are around us. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Go with me to 1 John 4. Beloved, he's talking to Christians. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, for they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And you need to be aware of people who say this, and I hear it, I hear it, we're all headed for the same place. We're all going to go to heaven. Well, sir, I don't know what Bible you're reading, but that is not what the Word of God said. And there, I, there is a doctrine there. There is an agenda there, folks, of these false teachers and these false uh, gods that they promote. 
And how do you know? How do I know if it's from God? Number one, what does the Bible say about it? Every situation, everything in life, the Bible speaks to. We have the answers to the question right here. The second thing, does it agree with my spirit? Does it agree with my spirit? When you read it, when you see it, when someone talks about it, does your spirit say, hey, that's okay. That's okay. And folks, we need to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong because the spirit of the Antichrist is already here, and we talked about that this past week. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now is already in the world. And you remember, folks, when this Bible was written, and you remember that time, even in those days there were false teachers. You are of God, little children, and have overcame them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Oh, folks, we are more than conquerors according to God. We can overcome this false doctrine. We can overcome these false teachings. We can overcome. We can know by the Word of God and the witness of the Holy Spirit and the witness of the Spirit that is inside of you what's wrong and what's right. Verse 5, they are of the world. Therefore, they will speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, this is important, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Oh, folks, there's a lot of people that cannot discern the truth from the truth from error. And there are people erring on the side of the spirit of the Antichrist in our day and time. They want to make right wrong and wrong right. And folks, it's an evil world in which we live in. And we, we know that Satan will be powerful. His presence is here on earth. He is. And, and uh, you know, there are just so many things that we need to be careful of. Now back in our text, back in our text, not only his person, not only his power, but I want you to see his purpose. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. And folks, at this time in the tribulation, there are no options. Okay, you will either take the mark of the beast or you will be killed. And, and he just says, that's the way they are gonna, going to control things. And you think about it. You know, when we talk about a one-world government, and we think about a one-world religion, and we think of these things, two words came into my mind uh, that I want to say today, and it is socialism and communism. Those are two things, folks, we need to be aware uh, and I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, that would never come to the United States. Can I remind you, 70-something years ago, a man named Hitler tried to take over the world with both of these things. And folks, we need to be careful. We need to vote godly people into office. We need people representing us that represents our beliefs. And I understand God is sovereign. I understand His, His will. I understand all of that. But it is our job as Christians, all right, Christians, all right, to uh, partake in. We need to vote. If you are not registered to vote, let me say this right here, shame on you. You need to register to vote, and we need to vote in Christians. And he causes all, both great and small, so, uh, small to, uh, to receive the mark in their right hand, and that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And again, there's so many, uh, you know, things going on about this number and about of the beast and all. And here it says, here 
is wisdom. Let him who understand calculate the number of a beast, for it is the number of man. His number is 666. And you say, how do you know you will die? Uh, Revelation 14, just look across the page. Revelation 14, 9, we will study this next week, but I just want you to see. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, verse 9, if anyone worships the beast in his image and receives the mark on, on his forehead or his hand, he himself uh, uh, shall uh, drink of the wine of the wrath of God. If you worship the beast, if you take the mark, which is poured out full strength in the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and smoke of their torment of sins forever and ever, and they will have no rest night and day who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark in his name. If you take this mark, your soul will be condemned to hell according to the word of God. And folks, that is a tough price to pay. But you know what I was thinking as I was studying this? You think about the needs of man, and when they control the economy, they are going to decide how much food somebody gets. They are going to decide who gets what. And it may even come down to, are you going to feed your family, or are you going to take the mark of the beast? Listen, folks, I would rather starve to death than take the mark of the beast. And I've said this before, folks. If anyone points a gun at me and says, you denounce Jesus Christ or you die, I am going to ask them, would you just pull the trigger? Because I will not deny my Father and my Savior and my Lord for anyone or any reason. Notice the three words. Hear is wisdom. Folks, we want wisdom in our lives. We need God's wisdom in our lives. And I jot down, and jot down there was probably 15 types of, you know, so-called formulas for the mark of the beast. Uh, Nero, you know, the reincarnation of Nero was one, and I just threw out the ones that I personally, and again, this is my personal. Don't, don't get on me here, all right? This is my personal opinion. But let me, let me give you the top four that I think could happen. The first one is six is the number of man. He was created on the sixth day, and he is to work six days a week. Number two, it's also the number of, a, of the World Bank code. The World Bank, notice that deal. It's the prefix to one of their codes. Number three, some new credit cards begin with the number 666. If you have a credit card like that, I suggest you get rid of it, okay? There's plenty of credit cards out there. And here's the one that I believe it is. Number six, a uh, number four, the fourth one is, the number six is the number of man. The number seven is perfection. And if there was a number for God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, it would be 777 because they are the only perfect beings. So I am saying, in my opinion, 666 is talking about Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And so do, I, no matter what you believe, if you are left here, if you are left behind, I'm telling you, you need to fall on your knees and you need to be saved as soon as you possibly can. But if you choose not to do that and you go and you do these other things and think, I'm just going to ride this out, whatever you do, don't take the mark of the beast. You will spend an eternity in hell. So we see all these things in Scripture. But I want to close with an application here. I know we're running a little late. 1 Peter 4. Can I finish up? Is that okay? 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 4, verse 7. 
but the end of all things is at hand. <laughs> we know that. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Folks, we need to be men and women of prayer. We need to pray for Israel. We need to pray for God's will to be done. We need to pray for protection on those who are being innocently murdered. We have lots to pray for. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin. Folks, there's enough hate in this world. i got to tell you what I did. <laughs> I was at the pharmacy, and I was about four deep, and I just waited, and just waited, and just waited. And when I got up there, uh, man, this isn't right. Three of the four was trying to help me with <laughs> my deal and you know there were people behind me and one man was really really ticked off and I could tell he was ticked off so I just thought now what can I do to help this situation and so I paid for mine and I am not telling I am telling you the truth 23 minutes later I paid for mine and you know what I told him I looked at that guy and I said I was clean shaven when I got in here <laughs> Everyone in the pharmacy busted up laughing. I mean, I, God just puts things, well, man, well, I think God does it, all right? But, you know, how do you ease? Folks, you can ease tension by your attitude, okay? I'll be switched if I'm going to get mad, because it used to be this way. I get in line, the person in front of me, uh, could we get a price on number three? Where am I? I'm standing right behind her. All right? And I finally figured out, you need to make this either a game or you just need to make somebody happy. And I am telling you, the, the pharmacy folks cracked. They said, that is the funniest line we've ever heard. So what am I saying? And you can read the rest of that. Don't, don't be a grumbler. Man, don't be mean. Make somebody's day. Give something away. Give a handshake and a hug. Even a smile. We are put here as God's representatives. We are the light of the world. Make somebody happy. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you so much for your word. And God, I pray, I pray, I pray that all here are saved. God, I, I, I just pray that if there's anyone here, just one, that doesn't know you, I pray today would be their day of salvation. God, I pray that they would come and realize that, man, it's going to get bad. It really is. And God, we need to be secure in our salvation. And Lord, there's others that need to rededicate their life. God, they need to follow the Lord in baptism. God, you've told them even even today, you need to join that church. This can be your family. God, I pray we would simply obey the Spirit of God. God, be with us this week. God, I pray our lights would shine bright. I pray the world could see us and know that we're Christians. So God, this is your church. This is your invitation. This is your time. God, I pray you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?